in this episode of At The Vets. It isn't always easy being a dog. Wait, and I always say, I wish I was the one on the table, huh? Oh, <laughs> even I don't get this almost I saw every month. A junior vet learns the ropes. Just a step, just a step, that's good to see. And Kira is hoping she won't lose another limb. The first vet strongly asked me to remove the okay. prior surgery, but this is the only leg that she can heavily rely on. Yeah, yeah. It's a different sort of day for Dr. Li Yi Lin of Gentle Oak Veterinary Clinic. Today we're just uh, at Gallop Stable. We're just here because all the horses here need their vaccination. Since a chance encounter with the stable's owner in August this year, it's Dr. Li's job to give the horses their yearly vaccination shots. It's actually good to be out here, getting in touch with the horses again. It's definitely different then being at the clinic first, clinic aircon, horses, no aircon, that's but kidding. Uh, I haven't worked on horses for a while. Hi, sweetie. Hello, darling. Today, she has to vaccinate 60 horses. You want me to go in? Yeah. It's all right, Baba. Yeah, I know. There we go. He goes a little bit shy, so we might just have to give him a bit more space, okay? If Dr. Lee isn't careful, an agitated horse might injure her if they buck and kick. What I do is I play the scenario of what I'm going to be doing for them and just really, really being calm and just waiting for the moment when you feel that the horse starts to shift its energy. When it goes to, okay, you can approach, then it's a slow approach, it's still a very respectful approach, I always say. Good boy, thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, Romeo. Ooh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Don't like it, I know, don't like it. Sorry. All right, all right, all right. Even before the needle enters the skin and muscle, uh, I actually say to them, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. All right, all right, buddy, very shy. A lot of times, if they do feel calm enough without extra stresses, uh, you realize that it just goes nice and smooth again. Okay? Here you go, good boy. We're about halfway there, I think. In school, you have to write essays, right? My ambition is dot, dot, dot. So I already remember at that point, I wrote that I wanted to be a vet. My true ambition was really to, to try and go into wildlife conservation. I had the chance to then be exposed to certain wildlife centres. The biggest one was when I had a chance to visit the Orang Utan Care Centre that is set up by Dr. Birote Gaudikas. They rescue all the orphan orangutans in Borneo. That's something that I hold very dear to my heart. Because day to day at the clinic, we focus a lot more on dogs and cats. All in a day's work, for sure. A different kind of a day for me, but still a very, very fun day. On a regular day, Dr. John Paul Lai from the Animal Wellness Center could see up to 30 patients. But today, it's a little different. This is my off day. I don't have an off day. This is the day I come into my lab. Apart from running a vet clinic, Dr. Lai also rents a lab to research new treatment for animals. The advancement of human medicine is way up there for the veterinary profession. Our advancement is very low. I want to contribute to the veterinary profession. 
that's how I wind up with my own lab. I'm doing cell therapy, I'm doing regenerative medicine, I'm doing anti-aging. One of the clinical trials that Dr. Lai has been working on is natural killer cell therapy. Natural killer cells are a special type of white blood cells produced by the body. They are the first line of defense. They are the ones that kill viruses, bacteria, and also cancer cells. In 2008, Dr. Lai encountered natural killer cells overseas, being used for human cancer treatments. I went to Japan and I found out they were using natural killer cells together with chemotherapy. And I found, wow, what a real logical way to do it because cancer is a disease of your immune system. What better way to treat it than you use immune cells? That got me thinking and that got me started. Cancer rates amongst animals are high, just like humans. I think at the moment we have nothing. We have the traditional chemotherapy, but what if that fails? So what options? There are no options out there. Back then, using natural killer cells on animals was unheard of. I visited many hospitals and all that. Nobody would tell me how to grow killer cells. It took me many years to finally hit on the right ingredient. And now, we're very confident in the quality of our natural killer cells. And we're reasonably confident of some of the cancers that we can use it on. At the moment, we are the only clinic in the world doing clinical trials on natural killer cell therapy. And lo and behold, we saw in 40 to 50 percent of our cases, the patient go into remission. And the cancer will start to shrink. I think I'm a bit of a crazy guy, but I think I'm intelligently crazy. The fundamental thing that drives me in my practice and the thing that drives me being a veterinarian is the respect for my patients. In the east of Singapore, Dr. Nicholas Wu is also taking some time off his usual routine of doing surgeries. He is mentoring one of the two junior vets under his charge. See there, that dog had most likely we suspect it's a cancer of the lymph node, in other words, called lymphoma. And the aim is to take a sample to confirm our suspicion. So what we do, right, see how the, the node right, is lengthwise like that, right? Mm. You don't have to poke like that. I want to get the lengthwise step. We do hire a number of uh, vets that are fresh out from the university. So I think it's important for us to handhold them throughout this early start period. Like. Uh, one of the new vets here. I just graduated a couple of months back. I remember I speak to my friends, my family, they always like imagine me hugging puppies and, and kittens and just doing vaccines all day. But unfortunately, a lot of times, you know, we see a lot of older animals that have fallen sick. It's definitely stressful having to see so many different caseloads. Today, Gordon is learning how to do a biopsy. It's his first time using this particular tool, a true cut biopsy device. Hold it stable like that, then you just push. Oh, Only yeah. the head will come out. Oh, and then oh, after oh. that, then you full plunge, and then the sheath will go over it. Ah, okay, then so you then that will it, like, cut, the, uh, cut the thing, and then you just take out. Okay, and then you, one, sir. Yeah. The true cut biopsy device allows the vets to take a tissue sample for an accurate diagnosis. Uh, just a step, just a step, just bring this in. Yep, good, that's perfect. Very low, yeah. I've been a junior vet once. When I see a patient and I don't know what to do, right, it's really very strange. I mean, you can try to go to the textbook and try to find your answers there, but you don't know where to look. And I, I totally see what they're going through because I've faced it before. And I think it's really very important to have support. Are you stable? Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing should have sample. Perfect. Yes, oh, please go in. After some time at his lab, Dr. Lai is back at his clinic to see a patient in distress. My name is Saint. Um, this is Kira. She's a Yorkshire and she's about 14.5 to 15 years old. 
She actually had cancer three years back at the other side of the lake. Three years back, it got amputated. Kira, come. But seven months ago, the cancer relapsed, and now a tumor threatens another of Kira's legs. How old is Kira? Wow, <laughs> not bad. So this is a second opinion. Hey, sweetheart, let's have a look at you. So you're concerned that this could still be a mast cell tumor. Mm. Saint has brought her dog Kira in to see Dr. Lai. Kira previously had one leg amputated due to a cancerous growth. Now with the cancer spreading, Saint is hoping her precious pup won't lose another limb. The first vet strongly asked me to remove it via surgery, but this is the only leg that she can heavily rely on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so. understood. And also, given her age, you do I not know, really want a GA and all that, okay? That's right. The options are to do nothing, do surgery, or do the non-invasive form, which is called cryosurgery, where we just freeze it. There's no cutting, there's no bleeding, there is no GA. So basically, we just numb that area. Cryosurgery is where you use extreme low temperatures to kill a cancerous tissue. And the good thing about cryosurgery is you stop it from spreading or even attempting to spread just by your freezing. We've done so many of it okay. for bigger tumours than this and they, they, they respond quite well. Okay. We can do that now or uh, do I have We to can do that. Let me just check. Yeah, I, I can understand the sooner the better for you or also for the patient. So don't worry. So we'll get it done today. So, take her out, sign the forms, get everything ready. No problem. This tumour has been there for a little while. We've numbed it with local anaesthetic. What I'm going to do now is freeze this. Prior surgery. It was a relatively common thing we did about 40, 50 years ago, but over the years, the lack of training and expertise and experience in the field has lost its fervor. And for most vets, I think it's easier just to cut it out. The gas here is nitrous oxide, laughing gas. So what we're doing is, we are just thawing out a bit. So once you thaw it out, we'll do a double freeze and she's done. If she'll stay still. <laughs> The whole procedure is only about 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, you're done. The next few days, there will be a bit of swelling there because actually what you've done is a freezer burn. And then once the swelling goes down, the tumour will die and then it will undergo uh, absorption. Yeah, it will just slowly disappear. I mean, other than the fact she's a bit irritated with us, but you know, we didn't cause her any harm. There's no real pain involved. All right, that's it. So you're going to go home soon. Bobby! After finishing up at the stables, Dr. Lee is back at the clinic to tend to regular patient Bobby the Pug. Grumpy face today. Bobby is in for a rather unusual treatment, a little mutt massage. Bobby is a pug. He sees me once every about four, six weeks uh, for his Bowen therapy. It's a set of specific movements, okay. targeting all the different okay. sets of muscles and areas of the body. The 16-year-old dog suffers from arthritis, painful deformities of the bone caused by wear and tear. It is incurable and affects about one in five dogs. So what Bowen does for him, it's almost a little bit like us going to see our osteopath or our chiropractor. His leg also a bit twitchy yesterday again. A bit twitchy, yeah. Mm. Good boy. Okay now, his back leg. 
not too the, short. The, the left one is back left. Yeah. Twitching. Uh. Yeah. We'll see how far today he goes uh, before he complains. Yep. Bowman therapy originated from Australia. My instructor lives in Perth. As far as I know, from a small animal point of view, I think I'm the only certified practitioner in Singapore. A lot of times when we are recovering from an injury or you know, just from old age, our connective tissue, which is the fascia, tends to almost get stuck to each other. And when that happens, hydration doesn't get in there, in between the tissues. The movements allow for hydration and in Bobby's case, with him being a lot older than most other pugs that we know of, his osteoarthritis is pretty, I would say, severe in that sense. So for us, to just to provide that little bit of comfort, I feel it, it just helps him out. Grace and I always say, uh, I wish I was the one on the table. Oh, uh. Yeah. Mm. Like, even I don't get this kind of massage <laughs> every month. No way. Shock me. Alright, buddy, we're finished. Done ready. Wake up ready. Let's Go go. Home ready. Uh, see you in six weeks. Huh? My special interest is really looking at holistic medicine. Apart from Bowen therapy, other therapies that we look at includes the use of supplements. For example, uh, Western herbs. We use a bit of TCM as well at the clinic. I also use therapeutic grade essential oils to aid my patients. I realise just following textbooks sometimes doesn't give us the effect that we really hope to achieve with our pets. Let's go. All right. Meanwhile, Dr. Nicholas Wu has one last patient for the day. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll be back. She'll be back. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, we're going to hook him dental. You can never brush the teeth very well for dogs, right? Even if the owners are very, 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 uh, you know, good at, you know, keeping the teeth clean, there's still going to be, like, tartar buildup on, on the back molars, so we're going to help remove them. Okay. Today, busy day. A lot of patients were here for rechecks. Mostly the surgeries, like coming back for me to look at the wounds, take out stitches, and some is just chronic long term patients that require some checkups. Like. On a weekday, we probably see around about 30 to 40 patients on a busy day. But on the weekends, it can easily go up to 60 to 70 patients a day. I do encourage my staff to go and take their breaks and not just overwork themselves. The hip nurse always asks them, hey, go, go, go for lunch. But some of them, you know, they are so engrossed, they say, hey, no, no, there's some things that just needs to be completed. You know, we can take the lunch later. I'm finally done for the day, so I'm just finishing up some work. So some owners to call to, to hand over my patients to my colleagues. And tonight after this, I'll be going home to start packing because I'm going for a holiday, a short cruise for a few days. So I think it's a good chance to just sort of relax and unwind a little. Yeah. Uh, one, one which is COVID. family, 
at, at work and, and all the patients that we are obliged to look after. Here we go, Scott. Come on. <laughs> we always try to plan small little trips like that so that we can sort of get strong family time somehow. While Dr. Wu goes on a well-deserved break with his family, at the Animal Wellness Center, Kira is back for a follow-up two weeks after her cryosurgery. She looks good. So this is the one we froze, and it's dead. Yeah, so it'll scab, that's what happens. And after a while, the body will just resolve that, and the scab will fall off. And it's not painful anymore. And there's no discharge, there's no signs of secondary infection. She's looked after it well. That's good. All right, happy birthday. I think if you want to be a real vet, you should be committed. You should be aware that it comes with long hours. I work 10 to 12 hours a day. And I must say, I'm enjoying it. I love dogs and cats and, and animals of all types. Uh, it's, it's my life, it's, it's, it's in my soul. the cryosurgery, the first two days she was yelping in pain when I tried to cleanse the wound, apply the lotion. But subsequently, I think she's doing okay. She's very cheerful kind of dog. And then every time when I get home, she just jumped on my lap. After the surgery, even I got home and then she still wanted to hop on my lap. I mean, she would try to do that. When I met Dr. Lai, he gave me another option that I would never think of. Yeah, because I thought it's either surgery, if not chemotherapy medication. But he told me that we can do cryosurgery and we can freeze off the alarm to make sure that it doesn't spread further. I'm really grateful for that. A pet is a family. Her wall is basically me. I don't want to let her down and as long as, you know, she wants to live on, I'll try to do my best for that. In the final episode of At The Vets, oh, Top the French Bulldog is about to lose his eyes. It's really just removing the source of pain. Sight is lost, and unfortunately that's non-reversible. Dr. Wu gets his hands dirty with community cat Putty. There's no way this two will actually come on like a cock that's stuck here. The cat has been suffering. And Ginger's life hangs by a thread. He's actually knocking on Dad's doorstep at the moment. I cannot let him die. 